It was a windy day. Sonali and Ragini hopped on their bicycles. They pumped the tires, pedaled hard against the wind, rang their bells to steer past sheep, and then whoosh, down the slope, their cycles sped faster and faster, even without pedaling. What made them work harder against the wind? What pulled them downhill? The answer lies in one of the most fundamental ideas in science. Force. What is force? A force is a push or a pull acting on an object that can change its state of motion, start, stop, or change speed direction or shape. For example, when you push a box, pull a drawer, or lift a bag, you are applying force. So, force always comes from interactions. Let's explore this idea further. A force always involves at least two objects, one applying the force and the other receiving it. For example, when you push a table, your hand exerts force on the table and the table goes back on your hand. You feel this resistance. If an object is at rest, it doesn't mean that no forces act on it. It can mean that forces are balanced, cancelling each other. The SI unit of force is the Newton, written as N. Now that we know what a force is, let's see what it can do. A force can bring about four main effects. It can make a still object move. Example, kicking a football at rest. It can change speed. Example, pushing a toy car. It can change direction. Example, a cricket ball changes direction when hit by a bat. It can change shape. Example, pressing a balloon flat. So, forces can change motion and shape. But not all forces are alike. Let's study their types. Forces can be categorized into contact forces and non-contact forces. Let us look at each of them and their types. Contact forces. Forces that act only when two objects touch each other are called contact forces. For example, pushing a table with your hand. Contact forces have different forms. Let's look at their types. Muscular force. The force produced by the contraction of muscles in humans and animals is called muscular force. Walking, lifting, pushing all come from contracting muscles. Animals use muscular force too. Even inside us, muscles help chew, move food along the digestive tract and pump blood through the heartbeats. Muscles create motion. But there's another contact force that resists motion. That is friction. Friction is the contact force that opposes motion when one surface moves or tries to move over another. When an object slides or tries to slide over a surface, friction opposes the motion. Push a box on a floor, it moves some distance, then stops because friction acts opposite the motion. Friction depends on surfaces. Rough surfaces create more friction. Smooth surfaces create less. You might have noticed ships, aeroplanes, trains are designed in a certain way. Let us understand the reason behind this using an example of ships. When a ship moves through water, it faces resistance from both air and water. This resistance is called drag in air or water resistance in water. We've seen contact forces, but forces don't always need contact. Some act from a distance. Non-contact forces. Forces that act even when objects are not touching are called non-contact forces. Non-contact forces have different forms. Let's look at their types. Magnetic force. The force a magnet exerts on magnetic materials or on another magnet is called magnetic force. Examples. Like poles of magnets repel each other. Unlike poles attract. Electrostatic force. The force exerted by a charged body on another charged or uncharged body is called electrostatic force. Rubbing a plastic scale or balloon builds static charge. A charged object can attract small paper bits. To similarly charged balloons repel, opposite charges attract. Gravitational force. The force with which the Earth pulls all objects towards itself is called gravitational force. It is always attractive. 
throw a ball upward. It slows down, stops, and falls back because gravity acts downward throughout. Gravity not only pulls objects down, it also gives them their weight. This brings us to our next question. What is weight? The weight of an object is the gravitational force with which the earth pulls it. We measure weight with a spring balance. First, check the range, example 0 to 10 n. Next, find the least count, the smallest division. If 1 n is divided into 5 parts, each small division is 0.2 n. Hang the object on the hook, wait for the pointer to settle and read the value carefully. Since weight is a force, its unit is the newton. After weight, let us look at mass. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. It is constant everywhere and measured in kilograms, kg. Example, a 1 kilogram block weighs about 10 n on earth, but only 1.6 n on the moon. The mass stays 1 kilogram, only the weight changes. To make it clear, let's compare the two. Mass is the matter in a body. It does not change with location. Unit, kilogram, kg. Weight is the force of gravity on that body. It changes with the strength of gravity. Unit, newton, n. In short, mass is what you are made of. Weight is how strongly gravity pulls you. Have you ever tried pushing an empty capped bottle underwater? What happens? It bounces up. Liquids exert an upward force called upthrust or buoyant force. An immersed object feels to main forces. Weight downward and buoyant force upward. The upward force exerted by liquid on an immersed object is called upthrust or buoyant force. If weight upthrust, the object sinks. If weight is equal to upthrust, it floats at some level. We can understand this better using an example. Why does a coin sink? but a wooden block float? A coin sinks because it is made of metal, which is denser than water. The upward force, buoyant force, on the coin is less than its weight, so it goes down. A wooden block floats because wood is less dense than water. The buoyant force on it is equal to or greater than its weight, so it stays on the surface. In short, whether an object floats or sinks depends on its density compared to water. Density is the amount of mass present in a given volume of a substance. To understand this behavior of floating and sinking in more detail, we can use Archimedes principle. Archimedes principle states, an object fully or partially immersed experiences an upward force equal to the weight of the liquid displaced. If the displaced liquid's weight is less than the object's weight, it sinks. If equal, it floats. For example, a ship floats because it pushes aside, displaces, a large volume of water and the weight of this displaced water is equal to the weight of the ship, keeping it afloat.